Give me a minute. Uh, I have a, a couple more things to say about the trip to Kharkiv. Because Kharkiv, as a frontline city, has been badly abused, beat up, demolished, like this house here. And here's the thing. This house is just a house. It's somebody's house. It's in the middle of a bunch of houses. There is nothing resembling a military target anywhere within blocks and blocks of this house. Legitimately, uh, down the road, maybe three quarters of a kilometer, a kilometer, something like that, is the aviation school. Not a residential house complex, not a military target, but a place where you train pilots. And it could be that maybe that was the target. But still, that's education, right? It's not, strictly speaking, military. At any rate, what I saw in my two days in Kharkiv was an absolute disregard for the lives of the people that live there. We saw attacks against schools, residential complexes, individual homes, coffee shops, cafes, uh, cinemas. Not military targets. This is further evidence, not merely of Russian war crimes, but of an intentional uh, terror campaign to terrorize the people of Ukraine into submission. That's what's going on here. And we in the West have to do, we have to have the courage of our convictions and do the hard but right thing here and support the Ukrainians as they defend themselves from the unbridled and insatiable uh, aggression of the Russian army or the Russian government or frankly of the Russian people because one man did not do all this. He might be responsible for it, but it was engaged in with alacrity and uh, and the implicit consent of a large swath of the Russian people. Make no mistake.